In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to export your final product from Premiere Pro. And this is going to be exporting a compressed video type, and a video type which would then be great to upload to somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo. Okay, so I've got this short clip in my Premiere Pro timeline, so I'm going to do an, a quick export. So I'm going to go export, and what you need to do is when exporting a file, you need to have your mouse cursor selecting this part of the timeline because you're choosing this sequence because there could be multiple sequences on this row. So you want to make sure you click this timeline to signify that I want to export this particular sequence. And then if you go back to file and export, the export media option will be highlighted. And as you can see, there's also a shortcut here on the keyboard as well. Okay, so I'm going to run through the export settings I usually use. So first of all, I use the format for QuickTime. And then it'll give you the default preset, which is the standard definition PAL DV setting. Now, I'm just going to run through what I use. And as I mentioned in a previous tutorial, uh, when I produce cartoons, I produce them at 720p and 25 frames per second. So I'm just going to be showing you what I export as but the general file type and Kodak can be applied to videos across any resolution and frame rate. So if you're watching this and you maybe use a different resolution or a different frame rate, you can still follow this, just change the frame rate and resolution when appropriate. Okay, so I'm gonna change the preset. So what I wanna do is I have made certain presets for YouTube, but I'm just gonna show you manually how I actually create these presets. So what I do is I don't actually select anything yet. I just keep it on that preset, but I'm gonna edit the actual video settings. Okay, so here is the main part you wanna focus on, the video tab. So for my Kodak, um, I want a compressed video, and one of the best compressed video formats is H.264. So I just go down here and click that. And once I did that, I'm gonna put my quality at 100, which is what I always do. And now I'm gonna set the dimensions for my resolution. So I'm gonna do 1280 by 720. I'm just gonna lock this now. So you can pick a different resolution if it's a different one you're using. So I'm just using this resolution. And the frame rate is 25, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Okay, now this is quite important field type. You get an option of upper, lower, and progressive. Now, if you're working with HD footage, which I'm guessing will be the majority of you, you need to pick progressive. And the reason why this is, is when you actually say the term 720p, the P actually stands for progressive. So if you're working with HD footage, uh, the progressive field type is the best one to use. So the, for the aspect, you wanna be using square pixels, this is the best for HD footage. Okay, and then when it comes to render at maximum depth, I always have that clicked here. Okay, and then when it comes to these advanced settings, I usually leave these unchecked. And when it comes to bitrate, this can be quite important. Now basically what you can do is if you're conscious about the file size of your compressed video, you can limit the data rate and this will drastically decrease the file size, but obviously it will decrease the actual video quality as well. Now in my experience, when I make my cartoons, they're usually between one and two minutes long. So the file size is usually between 100 and 200 megabytes. So when it comes to a site like YouTube, I'm never in danger of having too big a file size. However, if you're exporting, let's say, a 30 minute full HD video from Premiere, you might be in danger of going over the two gigabyte file limit which is imposed on a site like YouTube. So in that case, you may want to limit the bit rate. But for this specific example, I've got a very small clip, so I'm just gonna leave this unticked. And then at the bottom here, I usually have this clicked, use maximum render quality. Okay, so that just about covers the video settings. Now to go on to the different tabs. So for filters, this gives you the option to basically apply a Gaussian blur throughout your whole uh, Premiere file. And I don't use this, I don't recommend using it, so I'm just gonna leave this. So we've covered video, now audio. Okay, so now on to the audio settings. So when it comes to the audio codec, I'd recommend keeping it on the uncompressed setting here. Now for the sample rate, 
So this is where you have to sort of decide what your actual final product is going to end up on. So if you're exporting a video for YouTube, I'd recommend either 48,000 or 44,100. These two rates at the bottom are far too high for what you need, um, especially for YouTube, because YouTube basically mixes down the sample rate to a lower rate anyway. So I'd recommend about 48,000 for that. So the channels, you want to keep it on stereo unless you have uh, 5.1 surround sound, but usually you'd just be dealing with stereo. And the sample rate. Now I usually just go for 16. Now if you are working with 32-bit float sound files in your Premiere file, by all means export at 32-bit float, but usually 16-bit will do great. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to export. So at this point, I would usually put my output name. I'm just going to leave it at this for the moment. And what I do just before I export is I do a quick look at the summary. Now what I do is I just compare the stats for the source input to the output to make sure I haven't done any errors. So I mainly just compare the resolution, uh, the frame rate, and if it's progressive or not, and just to make sure I haven't made any big errors before I export. So now there's nothing left to do but press the export button. So there we go, your compressed video should be exported and ready to use. So as always, I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe.